Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the sixth Sunday of Easter from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. Christ is alive, let Christians sing His cross stands empty to the sky Let streets and homes with praises ring His love in death shall never die In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today on this Mother's Day weekend, Jesus speaks to us about love, something that many of us learned about through our mothers. And so let's now pause and acknowledge our sinfulness, the times and ways that we failed to love one another. Lord Jesus, you laid down your life for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you free us from our slavery to sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you tell us to love one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up! I myself also am a human being. Then Peter proceeded and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. 
Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power, His saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power, his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power, his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power, His saving power. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. 
This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story from the Jewish tradition about a rabbi who goes out for a walk, and he notices on the road over by the riverbed, a few blocks away, that a charcoal fire is burning. So he goes to walk down by the river, and he comes to a man who had just finished lunch with some fresh fish that he had caught. And the two of them get to talking, and the man said, yeah, I took some time off from work today to go fishing and eat some fish fresh out of the water. You know, I just really love fish. The rabbi said, no, you don't. You don't love fish. And the man looked shocked. And the rabbi said, if you loved fish, you wouldn't stick a hook in their mouth, yank them out of the water, kill them, chop them up, and eat them. How can you call that love? Well, this story, like all stories, is absolutely true, even if it didn't happen, because it helps us see what's at the heart of today's scriptures. What is love? And what does love consist? You know, so often we think of love from how it makes us feel. We may love fish or a juicy steak or cinnamon pancakes, but we're not really loving something. We're really showing love for ourselves. We're doing things that bring us happiness and fulfillment. And we've all heard many, many songs about What a great feeling it is to be in love. And it truly is a wonderful feeling. But a relationship is not going to last unless it's grounded in something deeper than how you make me feel, how you fill my needs now. Because feelings can change over time. So what is this love that our scriptures are talking about? The word love is mentioned nine times in the second reading and nine more times in the gospel. What is this thing called love? Well, if we pay attention to both of those readings, we discover that if we're going to understand love, real love, we don't start with ourselves or with our feelings, but we start with God. It's not about our love for God or our love for other people, or even our love for ourselves. All three of those things are meant to be a reflection of God's initial love for us. John said, this is love, not that we have loved God, but that God has loved us and sent His Son as expiation for our sins. And then Jesus in the gospel says, love one another as I have loved you. So if we're going to understand what real love is, we have to start with God's love. And how has God loved us? Well, let's put it this way. If God's love were based on feelings, how soon would His love for us have petered out? Hmm? After Adam and Eve, after Cain and Abel, after Sodom and Gomorrah, after the golden calf in the desert, after his son was nailed to the cross, after all the wars of religion, after the abortion culture, after the Holocaust, after the destruction of his creation. These humans, yuck, he would have fallen out of love a long time ago. But if God still loves us, it means that he loves us whether he feels like it or not or whether he feels loved or not. You can imagine God saying, well, nobody thanks me. Nobody appreciates what I do for them. They all take me for granted. They love their job and their money and their vacation home more than they love me. 
This relationship just isn't working out. We seem to want different things. I'm going to move out and get my own place. But God has never said that. And God never will say that because His love is not based on feelings. And it's also why in the gospel, Jesus calls love a commandment. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. I don't just love you when I feel like it or when you love me in return, Jesus is saying. And that's what our love should be like toward others. Jesus goes on to say that he's willing to lay down his life for us. And there's no greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. But really, when you think about it, there is a greater love that Jesus showed to us because he laid down his life not just for his friends, but those who were not his friends, people who weren't even be considered Facebook friends, people who were indifferent. He laid down his life for them. People who conspired to convict him, he laid down his life for them. Those who nailed him to the cross, he laid down his life for them. And you know, it's not hard to love people who love us. It's not hard to love people who appreciate us. It's not hard to love people who are kind of like us. But the test of the Christian love, our scriptures are saying, is how we show love to people who aren't so easy to love, who are different from us, who don't thank us very often, who don't respond well to our efforts to help them. And it's probably very appropriate that we hear this gospel on Mother's Day because one of the reasons that we always want to honor mothers is that as we look into our, our own past, perhaps our mothers more than anyone reflected that kind of love to us. Because, you know, again, as we look into our past, we weren't always that easy to love, were we? Yet, our mothers loved us, whether they felt like it or not, whether they were appreciated or not. And so, many of us got a glimpse of the kind of love that Jesus is talking about in the gospel through our mothers. They taught us something of what the love of God is like. In our first reading today, we can see how Peter, the first pope, changes his mind in a big way. And he gives us a, a good example of how the challenges to love one another as God loves us, how difficult it can be to love one another as God loves us because sometimes we don't even see or recognize the ways we're not showing love to other people. So a little bit of a background on this first reading because all you get is a kind of like the, the grand finale of this story, but you don't know how it, how it came about. And basically for good Jews like Peter, there were two groups of people in the world. There were the Jews and there were the Gentiles. And they were like, separate categories of people. The Jews wouldn't eat with the Gentiles because they didn't keep kosher laws. Most of them would not enter the house of a Gentile for fear of profaning themselves. And even one of the common expressions of, of that day uh, fell out of Jesus' mouth when he was talking to the Canaanite woman. It's not right to give the food of the children to dogs because some Jews thought of Gentiles as being like dogs who would eat anything that was set before them. They didn't keep kosher. They didn't care whether food was unclean or profane. So now we come to this chapter in the book of Acts, and it begins with Cornelius, Cornelius, who is a centurion, a Roman officer, right, a Gentile, but one who was supportive of Jewish interests and had an interest in, in Jewish faith. And he has this vision that he should send for Simon Peter, who was in the nearby town. 
and he sensed that this vision was from God. So Cornelius sends a delegation to Peter's house. Well, meanwhile, Peter is on the roof of this house where he was staying, um, praying right before lunch. Right? They were preparing lunch for him downstairs, and so he kind of had food on his mind. And while he's praying, he goes into this trance, and he sees this huge canvas, Lord from heaven, with all the animals on it that were considered unclean. And a voice that said, take and eat what God has made clean, you must not call profane. And Peter found this very, very puzzling. What, is this, what does this mean? Well, just about this time, the delegation from Cornelius arrives and kind of shocked. And so Peter, because he doesn't know what it's about, gathers up a little posse and they head back to Cornelius' house. And he walks right in to Cornelius' house, the house of the Gentiles. And his posse, they're looking around, well, what's he doing? He's not supposed to do that. But he listens to everything that Cornelius says. And at the end of it, we hear this snippet here. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who honors him is acceptable to God. And as he was speaking, the Holy Spirit descends upon Cornelius and his household. And, and, and so then Peter says, well, how can we withhold baptism? The Spirit fell upon them just as it fell upon those who are Jewish. Even Peter is shocked. He can't believe it. But he recognizes what the Holy Spirit is doing. He can't withhold the Spirit from the Gentiles. He can't withhold baptism from the Gentiles. He can't withhold baptism from a Roman, one of Israel's oppressors. He can't withhold baptism from those who do not accept the Jewish kosher law. You don't have to be credentialed as a Jew to be baptized. Now, Peter has lots of explaining to do when he gets back to Jerusalem. People are, how could you go into that man's house like that? But he holds fast, holds firm to what the Holy Spirit had done because he saw that the Holy Spirit had removed the barrier between what was pure and acceptable and what was considered unclean and profane. That God's love is for them too. That this barrier that we put up was a human barrier. It wasn't a barrier from God. God loves those folks too, just as God loves us. Hmm? So we might ask ourselves the question, from whom do we withhold our love? Who do we consider profane and unclean? You know, there are certain museums dedicated to recognizing the sins of the past where we hold one group as sacred and another group as profane and unclean. Here in the Chicago area, we have a Holocaust museum. Aryans were loved, but Jews and handicapped and homosexuals, etc., etc., they were outside the boundaries of love. They were unclean and profane. Down in Montgomery, Alabama, they have what they call the National Museum of Peace and Justice, but informally it's called the Lynching Museum because it recalls how black people and Asian people were considered profane outside the boundaries of love and so they could be lynched. What if we went into a trance and if a canvas were lowered in front of us whom or what would be on it that we would consider profane or unclean? See, as Jesus approached his last hour on earth, he knew that the only thing 
that could save a broken world and our broken lives is self-sacrificing love. We have to love one another as he loved us. Anything less than that will leave us and our world more broken and more divided. And now we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With concern for the needs of the world and with faith in God's saving power, we raise our voices in prayer. For the Church that we, whom Jesus has called friends, may remain in his love and be instruments of love and healing in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace, that God will give courage and wisdom to those working to end the spread of nuclear weapons and protect the human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all mothers, and those who have shown us a mother's love, that God will watch over them, fill them with every good gift, and fill their hearts with peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For communities overwhelmed by the COVID virus, particularly in India, that God will slow the spread of the virus, give strength to all caregivers, and open opportunities for the distribution of the vaccine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost a child, and all those whose longing for children has gone unfulfilled, that the Good Shepherd may console them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom we find difficult to love, that God will touch our hearts and help us recognize them as our sisters and brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of peace, you call us to the fullness of life in your presence. Hear our prayers and help us build communities where all will flourish and all will find welcome. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as keeps my feast, my strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast as men's in length, such a strength as makes his gain. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, 
so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peregrine and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the, the clergy, the ministers, the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now as brothers and sisters to one another, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's share God's gift of peace with the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. On this day, O oh beautiful Mother, on this day we give thee our love. Near the Madonna, fondly we hover, trusting thy gentle care to prove. On this 
this day we ask to share, dearest mother, thy sweet care. Aid us ere our feet astray, wander from thy God. Day we give thee our love. Near thee, Madonna, fondly we hover, trusting thy gentle care to Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. He is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion Thunder like a mighty flood Jesus out of every nation Has redeemed us by his blood